Hello, I am Flash Isaac and you are welcome to my economics class. Today, I shall be taking you through the meaning and scope of economics. What does economics mean? What does economics cover? And what does it not cover? I promise to make this class as simple as possible and as interesting as possible. At the same time, maintaining details. Economics is from the Greek word or is derived from a Greek word. Oikonomia, 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 oikonomia. What does this Greek word mean? It simply means the efficient management of household resources. Efficient management of household resources. Now, what is the reason for management of household resources? Why should we manage household resources? This is because human wants are unlimited and we have limited resources. So this is one of the biggest challenge or biggest problem of economics. This is because resources are scarce. They are limited. Therefore, we need to manage these resources efficiently. The biggest challenge of household, firms and government is scarcity of resources. Availability of resources to meet ends, to meet the needs of people. This is the reason any definition of economics should cover resources, scarcity of resources, or using the available resources to meet the need of household, firms, or the government. Or economia, efficient management of household resources, because resources are scarce and wants are so much. We therefore need to manage these resources efficiently so that we are able to meet needs. There are many persons or many experts who volunteered to give us definitions of economics. Let us take a look at them. Adam Smith in 1776 said that economics is inquiry into the nature and causes of the work of nations. Adam Smith is letting us know that economics is an inquiry to inquire, to check, to dig deep into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations. So what is the reason for the wealth of this nation? What are the causes? So what is the nature? What is the type of wealth this nation is building? This is what Adam Smith defined economics as. And Alfred Marshall in 1798 defined economics as the study of mankind in the ordinary business life. So we study mankind humans in ordinary business life. How do they go about their business? How do they utilize resources? So this is the definition of economics according to Alfred Marshall. John Stuart Mint in 1844 define economics, stating that economics deals with the practical production and distribution of wealth. According to John Mills, economics deals with production and distribution of wealth, which means how do we produce wealth? How do we realize wealth? Now that this wealth is produced, how do we make sure that it is not in the hand of one person or it is not in the hand of one firm or it is not in the hand of just government? This world is distributed among a lot of persons so that they will be able to live well. This makes a lot of sense. And let's look at the last definition of economics. This is according to Leonard Charles Robbins in 1932. 
He defined economics as a science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means and which has alternative uses. The most acceptable definition of economics is the one by Lionel Charles Robbins in 1932, which says that economics is a science which studies human behavior. Economics is a science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means and which has alternative uses. Now, ends mostly has to do with wants, the need of people to satisfy what man wants. And the wants of human is unlimited. It unlimited so many wants. Therefore, economics has to study human behavior as a relationship, as a gap between ends and scarce means. Resources are scarce. In fact, scarcity of resources is a major issue in economics or is a major concern in economics or is a major focus in economics because wants or ends unlimited unlimited data then resources limited which means if we don't efficiently manage these resources it will not reach everybody which means that human behavior need to study as a relationship between ends and scarce means and which has alternative uses now let's look at something economics is a science what type of science is it a pure science or is it a social science Economics is a social science or as you are studying economics, you are studying a social science subject because it studies human behavior. Any subject that basically studies human behavior is a social science subject. However, economics can also be regarded as a science subject in the sense that it makes use of scientific method, scientific analysis to check the relationship between ends and scarce means which has alternative uses so ladies and gentlemen meaning and scope of economics according to adam smith economics is inquiring into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations according to alfred marshall economics is the study of mankind in the ordinary business life according to john Stuart means economics deals with the practical production and distribution of wealth. According to Leonard Charles Robbins, economics is a science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means, which has alternative uses. Now let's take a look at certain economic terms, certain economic scope, certain economics. The twin problems of economics are scarcity and choice. These are the twin problems of economics. Now what are the concepts or important terms that should be looked into or that should be understood when studying economics? They are want, scarce, choice, scale of preference, and opportunity cost. What are the meaning of these terms and how do they change the price of Gary in the market? Take a look at wants. Wants refer to our male desires that are unlimited and are insatiable. Now, as a person, you desire everything. You want to have houses in different countries. You want to have 50 private jets. You want to have the most beautiful man or woman, uh, the most beautiful woman in the world, or the most handsome guy in the world. You want to have this, you want to have that. As you are walking on the way, you imagine different things. I will just be this. Have this perfect only you, you want to be the best footballer in the world the best musician in the world the best actor in the world own the best company in the world so you want to be different things you want a whole lot of things all these are wants they are male desires and since they are unlimited and you cannot satisfy all it means you need to let some go you have to just leave some you can't satisfy all your desires but wants are our male desires now, scarce or scarce, they are limited supply of resources available for meeting our limited wants or aims. We have unlimited needs. 
we want a whole lot of things but we have limited resources to satisfy all those unlimited uh, resources therefore we say that resources are scarce they are not enough to satisfy our want so scarce or scarcity or scarcity refers to limited supply of resources available for meeting our unlimited wants or ends the next concept of economics is choice what is choice choice is the process of choosing among alternatives from our unlimited want due to scarcity of resources we know that resources are scarce and wants are unlimited so when you get the limited resources or out of your unlimited wants you need to choose some okay let me just use this let me use this so let me choose this let me take this let me leave this since i cannot take all of them so you choose the one to take that is making of choice the choice is yours just imagine you have two choices you either fail your exam or you pass you have so limited choice so you have to choose one so choosing to pass or choosing to fail you made choice choosing to succeed or choosing to fail is a choice so in life you'll be left or you'll be in a situation where you need to make various choices because you don't have all the options in the world they have to settle for the ones you feel they are best for you and the next is scale of preference scale of preference is arrangement of our alternatives or unlimited ones due to scarcity of resources in order of preference or importance what this is saying is that as a household you have to think this is called rationalization you have to reason i want we want car in this house to be going to school we need food stuff we need to buy additional food we need to open 10 bank accounts so you see a lot of options then you arrange them according to their importance or according to their preference which one should i do first okay i'll buy food stuff first after buying food stuff we buy foam so that we'll be able to sleep well after buying foam okay we'll do this we'll do that so you arrange them according to their importance in that case you are creating a scale of preference then the next concept of economics is opportunity cost opportunity cost is simply foregone alternative when a choice is made let me explain this the way you will understand if i need to buy pen then notebook i need to buy pen i need to buy notebook if i'm able to get only the notebook without getting the pen which means the opportunity cost of getting the, is the pen is the op, is the foregone alternative let me give another example instead of reading instead of going to the cinema to watch movie you are in your house preparing for exam now what is the alternative uh, opportunity cost or what is the foregone alternative it is simply the benefit or the enjoyment or the fulfillment or the happiness or the joy you would have derived from watching the movie and the money you would have spent in buying the tickets those are the foregone alternatives on the other hand if you want to see a movie instead of reading your book the opportunity cost is the time you would have spent reading your book or the time you would have spent preparing to pass your exam that is the opportunity cost so anytime you are left with two choices or choices to make once you are able to make one the one you are sacrificing that is the opportunity cost so with this hope i've been able to explain wants scarce choice scale of preference and opportunity cost up next let's look at problems of the society the economics problems or the problems of the society are what to produce what to produce how to produce for whom to produce and efficiency of resources used what to produce deals with goods to produce with limited resources 
So the first problem of the society, or the first economic problem, is what should we produce? We have limited resources. You don't have everything. Therefore, with what you have, what should you produce? This is a big question because it requires a lot of reasoning to know what to actually produce. If you produce what you should not produce, as a firm, you will run at loss or you may even fold up. Therefore, you need to know what to produce within limited resources so that people will be able to get it. If you know what to produce, then you will definitely get a big market or you get customers. The second economic question is how to produce. Now that you know what to produce, okay, let us produce biscuits. The next thing will be how should we produce the biscuits? Uh, to answer how to produce, or the, how to produce speaks of the technique to use in production. You need to choose whether to use capital intensive or labor intensive method. Capital intensive simply means you are using more machines than humans. So more machines to replace human effort and less human effort. Labor intensive means you are using more human effort or more people than machines. So depending on what you are producing, you can choose to use uh, labor intensive or capital intensive. And the third economic question is for whom to produce. Now that you know what to produce, you know the technique of production or the technique to use or the method you need for the production, you need to ask yourself who will benefit. So for whom to produce is very very important. You know what to produce and how to produce. So where is your market? Who are your target audience? So where should you push these goods to so that it doesn't get spoiled or so that you maximize sales or so that you are able to produce more? You therefore need to answer this. Who will benefit? And the next question or the last economic question or problems or the major ones or the basic ones is the efficiency of resources used. We know that resources are scarce. Should you waste them? No. So, proper management of resources is efficiency of resources used. You need to manage these resources properly so that you are able to get the best and so that you are able to give the best. So, these are problems of the society or basic economics problem. And economics is divided into microeconomics and macroeconomics. As it, microeconomics, as the name implies, this with behavior of individuals, households, and firms in market setting. So they focus on individual firms like small economics or small scale economy. That's what they focus on. For example, the concerns of microeconomics are how firms should determine what to produce, how common commodity price is determined, how individuals and households allocate resources, as you can see. So it's restricted to households or individuals or firms. Meanwhile, macroeconomics, on the other hand, deals with large economic aggregates. They don't speak of individual uh, expenses or firms. They deal with national income. What is the income of the nation? How do we account for the national income? Public finance, inflation, unemployment. So why microeconomics deals with the smaller picture? Macroeconomics take a look at the bigger picture. So that is it for economics, problem of the society, basic concepts. Now let's see two or three questions to test if you actually understood the class. The opportunity cost of a worker attending the university is simply the wages given up to attend the university. Opportunity cost is also referred to as real cost. Now let's look at these questions under meaning and scope of economics. The first one says, if one orange costs $2 and one kilogram of turkey costs $100, the opportunity cost of one kilogram of turkey is dash. Look at this. One orange is two dollars. One turkey is hundred dollars. 
So if you choose to buy a kilogram of turkey, what is the opportunity cost? The opportunity of cost of one kilogram of turkey is what you've lost by buying that turkey or the foregone alternatives. If you are left with choice of buying one orange or one kilogram of turkey and you decide or you decided to buy one kilogram of turkey for hundred dollars what have you left what is the foregone alternatives the foregone alternative is simply orange because you've decided or you decided to buy the turkey and not orange but from the option no option clearly says orange they attach value to orange like option a says 50 oranges b 10 oranges c 5 oranges and d 99 dollars the opportunity cost is obviously not 99 dollars because that's not what you lose buying a kilogram of turkey then you ask yourself this hundred dollars that i am using to buy one kilogram of turkey what else or have, what else would i have been able to use it for out of the two options instead of one kilogram of turkey you would have been able to use this hundred dollars to buy 50 oranges since one orange costs two dollars hundred dollars would have simply been 50 oranges so the foregone alternative when you settle down or you decide to buy turkey is simply 50 oranges because you would have been able to buy the 50 oranges so this is the correct option and this one says why is choice necessary choice is very necessary because of scarcity resources are scarce so you need to make choice choose out of the scarce resources and this says economics is a social science because economics is a social science because it studies an aspect it studies an aspect of human behavior ladies and gentlemen economics concept that is it i am flash isaac and i hope you found this class helpful if you do feel free to subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos and don't fail to check out the platinum youtube video for more subjects and topics tell your friends about it thank you